From WXII 12 News, this is Breaking News. We want to ensure that everybody has somewhere to go indoors, out of the storm, safe, neutral environment. Escaping Florence, what building in the Piedmont Triad is opening its doors to those impacted by the Category 2 hurricane. Good Thursday morning, folks. I'm Devontae McKenneth. With every minute that passes, more eyes become glued to Hurricane Florence. And although the storm has downgraded to a Category 2, we cannot let our guards down. Here's meteorologist Brian Slocum with the latest track. Brian? Yeah, based on that, Devontae, I'm not using the word downgraded today. It just does not matter that the storm has weakened some because the wind field has expanded. So as this approaches the coast is a very large wind field is going to bring a significant storm surge inland and a significant amount of rain just because of the sheer size of it. As you can see on the satellite image that the storm has sheared a bit on its southern flank. There's been some strong upper level winds that have disrupted a lot of the storms that have been developing on that side of it. But now it is in, with the, in view of the radar and you can step off of this. You can just make the eye wall out uh, on the extreme right hand corner of your screen. Winds are not all that substantial yet, but they're going to pick up very, very quickly across coast locations today now at about 10 to 15 miles per hour likely 20 to 30 by mid morning and uh, hurricane strength by later on tonight as that storm inches closer again a cat two. so what moving to the northwest at 17 miles per hour just offshore later tonight what has changed since yesterday is the storm will likely make landfall late tonight or early tomorrow morning now in the Wilmington metropolitan area as it's slowing down curving inland bringing heavy rain and wind inland and continues to track so still that southerly movement uh, there are some questions of whether or not that we start to see these outer northern part of the rain bands come through on Saturday or not. If we do, uh, it looks like we can uh, ramp up our, our rainfall totals, especially across our southern areas. Flash flood watches are actually flood watches issued for Davidson and Randolph County as well as Chatham County. Uh, those are in effect for much of the duration of the storm. We got a couple of raindrops out there this morning. We'll have much more in your local forecast and when we can start to see the rain and the wind moving here coming up in a bit. And Brian, thank you. 432 this morning, Hurricane Florence continues to approach the Carolinas, and that storm could still intensify as it takes aim at our coast. Travers Mackle joins us live from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Travers. Hey there, Devontae. Good to see you again. A lot of people here in Myrtle Beach bracing for what could be a serious storm that brings a lot of storm surge to this area. All businesses ordered to shut down by 5 p.m. last night. And anybody living in these low-lying areas, really, Charleston, Folly Beach, Myrtle Beach in South Carolina, ordered to head to higher ground. They had the contraflow yesterday. That's when all of the lanes of interstates are flowing in one direction. Most people have listened to the advice of emergency leaders. They've headed to different parts of this state. They've headed to North Carolina. They've gotten out. The storm is slow moving, but once again, it is expected to have a great impact in this area. Also, some people we talked with told us they plan on sticking around. Emergency leaders say that is not a good idea. They say if you stick around, you're basically on your own because they're not going to send first responders into the wind and rain and dangerous conditions to rescue anybody. So once again, people still have time to get out here and they should definitely take that advice. Reporting in Myrtle Beach, I'm Travers Mackle. Devante, let's send it back to you. Now, Travers, thank you. Happening now at 433, Duke Energy is preparing for the worst possible scenario. The company says 20% of the Carolinas could easily end up in the dark. That's between 1 and 3 million people. North and South Carolina have a population of a little over 15 million. More than 20,000 people are now on standby to restore power. That's the most in company history. And more than 12 people are waking up this morning inside the Lawrence Joel Veterans Memorial Coliseum. The Coliseum is serving as an emergency shelter and open its doors to people evacu evacuating around six o'clock last night. One woman from Wilmington says that she is glad to be out of harm's way. That's where it came. After dry, especially after driving three and a half uh, hours to get here. Yes, just knowing that we are together and that there's a safe place where we can lay our heads, it means a whole lot. No worries, free. Well, the shelter will be open for the next two weeks. The Red Cross will be there to connect people to the resources in their hometown and help them rebuild their lives after leaving that shelter.
Missionary outreach groups are also helping people get through Hurricane Florence. The Samaritan's Purse in North Wilkesboro has four trailers filled with everything from chainsaws to tarps to pressure washers and generators. Now they are also sending out the trucks Sunday or Monday and will be working with churches in areas that need the most help. Local chapters of the Salvation Army are answering the call to head east for hurricane relief. One group left Greensboro yesterday in a mobile feeding unit and supply trailer. They have 750 meals ready to go for storm victims and first responders. The Winston-Salem chapters feeding unit is stocked and ready to go as well. Officials are waiting to hear where they are needed the most. The Salvation Army is deploying 15 of these across the entire state with a few dozen more on standby. You can get inform important information about Hurricane Florence any time of day on the free WXII 12 News mobile app. You can find information about the latest track, a list of shelters that are open, and which schools and universities are canceling classes. We will also send breaking news alerts right to your phone. If you haven't stocked up yet on supplies, you still have a little time to get everything you need. Stock up on food and bottled water, and keep in mind stores are packed and lines are long, so be patient. Buy flashlights, batteries, and charges, cell phones, and tablets. Refill any prescriptions you may need over the course of the next several days. And bring in or tie down anything on your yard or patio that could blow away in the wind. And people in the danger zone are making sure their homes and businesses are prepared for the storm. Crews are putting the finishing touches on everything before the storm hits. Mallory Lane has the latest from Rocky Mount. The sun is down, but the work is continuing here in Rocky Mount tonight. We've got crews who are boarding up businesses. They've even got sandbags, about 800 of them. These guys work with Jake's LLC. Their work started yesterday. So far, they've hit six to seven places. Tonight, they're working at Belk Department Store in Rocky Mount to secure its entrance and try to keep water from coming in tomorrow night. They say business is booming right now. Probably sold about a good 150 bags today, just two people just walking by. I think this storm is worse than others, to be honest. I think people just, you know, it's just really taking us by surprise. So Several shelters are open in Tarboro and Rocky Mount for those who need it. Reporting in Rocky Mount, Mallory Lane, WXAI 12 News. Mallory, thank you. The Department of Homeland Security says nearly $10 million that used to be reserved for FEMA is now in the hands of Immigration and Customs Enforcement. However, the department says it won't impact the response to Hurricane Florence. Documents show the money, less than 1% of the agency's budget, is coming from travel, training, public engagement, and IT, not disaster relief. Evacuating ahead of Florence, why one family says is so hard leaving their homes behind. Plus, a couple of risk takers, what three boys were doing on the beach after a state of emergency was declared.